So this is the Porta Germain 250 Optimizer. Um, very high efficiency unit. It uh, is designed to uh, burn up all the smoke, so it's an EPA phase two rated unit. Um, what happens with this unit here is all the smoke has to go down through this hole in the center there. Um, there's a nozzle that all the smoke is directed through there, so the only way out for the smoke to go is out through the hole in the bottom. We introduce air through these uh, six holes on both sides. So the air comes in preheated through the refractor brick. You notice we have a lot of refractor brick in there. The refractor brick is in there so that it makes it so it will reignite. It will uh, gasify again almost instantly after it's uh, been in the down stage. So it comes on and off according to the aquastat. Down in the bottom of the chamber here we have a lot of refractor brick. We have a nozzle that directs the, uh, the into a target area. The target area is a U-shape that makes the smoke come around to the front. So it comes to the front of the stove. We're water cooled on both sides. As, and so the smoke comes to the front. The fire comes to the front. Goes to the back, the fire. As it's going to the back, it's giving off its heat into the water on both sides. Of course, it's rounded design. It's made out of quarter inch cold roll steel, heavy duty. We meet on the inside corner and we double weld all our joints. There's a weld on the inside and the outside. So before we put the outer jacket on, we double weld everything. We use a 12 gauge roof. It's got a baked on powder coat finish on the roof. We put the best gasket, it doesn't compress out. It's a very good seal on the gasket. Not just regular gasket, neither. I want you to push on this gasket just so you can see the quality of that gasket. Put oh, yeah. your thumb in there. Solid, yeah. It's a pretty solid yeah. gasket, yes. It's a boiler grade gasket, it doesn't compress out. That's the problems with some of them when they use the fluffier type gasket, it compresses out. In a short while, it's not sealing very good. An open spot, yeah. An open spot, exactly. The door here is a, is a adjustable uh, and uh, very easy to shut in the bottom. Adjustable in all three points, so all sides of the door is adjustable. The latches are all again adjustable, the doors are adjustable. Um, easy to open and close. There is a bypass for uh, for the gas, for the smoke. When you're filling it, you could open up your bypass to allow the smoke to uh, go straight up the stack rather than coming out at you. Um, we have a float water level indicator versus a sight glass or two. The float is easy to see your water level. Um, so when it's in the right range, it'll be floated up. This is a tie down for transportation. You hook it there with your chain or your strap for transportation. On off switch for the fan right here. Turn it on when you go to fill it. We're going to talk about the fire tubes. That actually, the heat comes up. So we've got the, uh, the, the fire going to the front of the stove because of the nozzle in the front. Then we, it turns around at the front of the stove and it comes through the, by the water-cooled sides in the bottom of the chamber. It comes uh, all the way to the back. And then it comes up these six tubes here in the back. So there's six tubes of two inch in diameter and there's water surrounding each of these tubes. So the uh, heat comes up, the smoke is pretty much burnt up down in the bottom because we're burning at temperatures close to 2,000 degrees. So we're, smoke's pretty much burnt up in the bottom. We come up through the six tubes, we turn a 90 degree turn and we go to the front through these 10 inch and a half tubes. There's turbulators in there, or ribbons, whatever, uh, and they actually make the, uh, the heat spin around and it gives off more heat into the water jacket. These tubes are all surrounded with water, so we go up to the front of the stove, and then we turn around and we come to the back through these 10 tubes. So it comes all the way to the back, same tub turbulators in there, and then up and out the stack. There uh, is very little heat loss, very, very efficient stove. Because of the reverse return on the fire tubes, it picks up as much heat as possible. You could actually put your hand in here when it's burning and you would not burn your hand. When it's 2,000 degrees down below, up here we're down to 200 and some degrees. Matter of fact, to get the temperature up higher, we have to pull out some of the turbulators to get the temperature up closer to 300 degrees. And even still with the turbulators out, it's hard to get it over 300 degrees. So very, very efficient design. I dare say there probably isn't a stove built with more efficient heat exchanger. This is a conventional design, the heat exchanger. It's been around for years. It's something that was in steam boilers and steam engines for probably 150 years or more. So it's a time-tested, time-proven design. You just don't get more efficient than the horizontal reverse return heat exchangers. This one here would be close to 250,000 BTUs. We're rating at 180 to 250 it's going to be in there. Uh, this is our air box. And the fan blows air into the air box and it's adjustable to above the fire and below the fire simply by turning them knobs. Once you get it set, you just leave it set and you'll be good to go. 
the Aquastat, it's a Johnson Control A419 Aquastat, very reliable, they're good quality Aquastat, uh, available off the shelf, it's not something that's made especially by the manufacturer that you have to go back to the manufacturer for. So they're located in where it's warm. We have uh, two pump hookups here, we have uh, hot water coming out of the top on both sides and return water in the bottom. There's knockouts in the bottom here to, uh, to put our uh, hoses through. We comes with a little cleaning tool here for scraping the ashes out of the front and a little ash pan to scrape them into. It also comes with a heavy duty uh, cleaning brush for cleaning tube your brush, tubes. Yeah. All you would get up here in the top is you would get some dust once in a while, maybe every 10 days or once a month you would clean them out. You'd pull out your turbulators. So we pull out the turbulators and set them aside. They're stainless steel by the way and we take our brush and we'd run the brush simply. It's open on the other end, right there. So it would drop down into the fire on the other end. So just brush them out. Um, simple, you know, a couple minute job to do that. Well insulated, we use six inches of fiberglass all the way around the boiler, so it's well insulated. The snow won't melt off the roof. Um, we choose to use fiberglass over spray on foam or other types of insulation because it breathes. Some insulations won't breathe. And if they don't breathe, and you're like we talked about the electronic, if you're cold on one side and hot on the other side, you have a potential for dew point condensation. Yeah, condensation, exactly. You'll see greatly reduced. You'll see steam coming out of this in the winter time. In the summertime, you wouldn't see anything for smoke. Um, you can actually, when it's burning, I've got a uh, plastic thermometer that I put into mine and check the temperatures here. Like I say, very low exhaust temperatures. Um, you could put a pen in there, and you know, more than likely, it wouldn't be a problem. The, uh, so very low temperatures on the exhaust.